What's up, everybody? It's Levi from levilastic.com. Thanks again for joining us. Please like and subscribe below. It would be a great help. And this is episode two of four of my interview with Dr. Mike Andriano. And Dr. Mike Andriano was the first key doctor that helped me on the natural path to cure my ulcerative colitis. I had lost 50 pounds in a single month. I was bedridden, I was disabled, and I wasn't getting any better. I'd seen four GI doctors up to that point. They had all put me on the same medication, the same protocol. I just wasn't getting better. I was fearful for my life. And they wanted to remove my colon, but Dr. Mike uh, really helped me on the natural path. So in this episode, you're actually going to learn about uh, different natural methods that you can use to help detoxify. So things such as uh, mud packing and biofeedback, uh, heart sound scans, and also you know tips to really maintain low stress levels. And I'm not just talking about mental stress, but physical stress because we're... Uh, in, you know, we come in contact with so much toxicity in this world today, whether it is through food or through being outside or chemicals or hairsprays or perfumes or even uh, things that you feel may be cleaning your body, what types of chemicals and, and things of that nature that are in those. So you're coming in contact every single day with large amounts of toxicity. And so he talks about how to reduce that. And so I think you'll find this very helpful. Come check it out and uh, we look forward to you joining us. Yeah, it was amazing. You know, whenever I was, I was so sick uh, for two months, two months. You were very sick, Levi. I was really scared and worried for you. I prayed a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it helped. It worked. <laughs> so crazy. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, I, for two months I was, you know, uh, when I lost 50 pounds and, and really the whole, the worst part was for that two months, I was having severe stomach cramps, uh, mm. almost every 10 to 15 minutes and it, they were gut wrenching and tears in my eyes. And I just, it was the, the worst pain I'd ever felt. And, What's funny is I had been to four different GI doctors. I had been on several rounds of antibiotics. I'd been on IV antibiotics, uh, I, you know, and I was basically up to that point. But whenever I saw you, the first thing you picked up was you're like, oh, you got some parasites, two parasites. I remember specifically, and you gave me some, some clay capsules to, to uh, suffocate them. Yeah. <laughs> and and it was amazing. And you said it would take about two weeks probably for that to work. And that was right at two weeks that the cramping just stopped. Mm -hmm. So that's, a, that. I mean, it was absolutely amazing. And that's whenever I was able to actually start eating and actually get an appetite back as well and start to um, work on the healing process. So when you um, pick up something or you find something in somebody, you, you know, it's always going to be different, but um you you focus on different uh, types of herbs and supplements, right? And herb supplements and homeopathy. Yeah, and and uh, so what is for those that may not know what is what do you consider homeopathy? Homeopathy, it, it, kind of going back to those cell salts. The, the idea of a home, homeopathic is um, your body, uh, all the systems of the body, and all the functions of your body they're signaled by different processes in your body. The nervous system is one level of signaling or communication, but there's several levels of communication. And homeopathy basically is uh, putting a particular informational input into the body and the body responds to it. So for instance, if uh, I gave you a uh, homeo homeopathy based on uh, your liver function, it would be uh, the information your liver needs to operate properly. And the program of your liver, if it's not working properly, is uh, not the right program. And now we're kind of resetting the program with the homeopathy. It's the information to correct the program. Okay. And uh, and I I actually uh, just had referred somebody over there to you, and they they gave me some really, really good feedback about oh, good. you. And, but they also told me about it something I, I i hadn't heard of it before but something about mud um a mud treatment or a, yes uh, could you kind of explain that a little bit yeah so the, the mud we call it mud packing or clay packing and it's uh, actually a real traditional and traditional medicine to use these external clay packs to uh, dry out toxins or 
whatever the particular philosophy is behind it. But basically what happens is in my world, the communication of your nervous system and some of these other communication systems, when you have some type of an injury, whether it's a, a scar from a surgery or a broken bone or a common one would be falling on your tailbone at some point in your life, it creates an interference in that communication. So now the brain's trying to talk to a certain part of the body, but that the interference will keep it, the message from getting there properly. So now there's a miscommunication. So it'd be like, I'm talking on the phone to you trying to tell you, hey, to get to uh, Denver, you gotta take this road, that road, make a right, make a left, but you're hearing half my information. So that's what an in interference field does in the, um, the clay packs they'll go on an area of injury and it basically pulls out some toxins that kept that area from healing properly. It takes out the static out of the nervous system created by the interference field and all of a sudden the communication is restored. So things work a whole lot better. Interesting. What other treatment protocols do you offer? Uh, are you still doing the scanning, um, the scanning there? Did the you used, um, you brought in, I think, um, Right whenever I moved away, kind of like uh, some wands or some. Uh, yeah, we, we do it in a little different form than uh, what you had when you or what you saw when you came in. It's a um, biofeedback machine, and uh, you get hooked up to it, and it scans a bunch of different uh, frequencies that we based on uh, the different organ systems again, and pathogens and toxins, and uh, that information will go into the body. Uh, the body responds back, and if it responds back negatively, then it indicates there's a need for some particular uh, treatment of, and the, and the machine actually does that treatment for you. So it's a pretty interesting technology. I have a technician that comes in and does that for me in the office. So we do that. We do the uh, mud packs. I do a lot of mud packs in the office now. I have another practitioner that does that. We offer a um, heart sound scan which basically measures the heart sounds it looks kind of like an ekg and it graphs out the heart sounds and from that you can uh, optimize nutrition regarding your heart so that's a really neat technology we just brought in i do some uh, other neurological work in the office some hands-on neurological work, neurological work but the bulk of my practice is doing the uh, kinesiology type testing we call it the stress response testing and uh, putting together nutritional protocols that include the diet and nutritional products and homeopathy. Okay. Now, I'll be there next week, actually, for a checkup. Yeah, I look forward to seeing you. So is there anything in addition to just seeing you, any of those other um, options that you would recommend? Or is that just based on if you find something, do you like to see somebody first and then see what they may need after that? Generally, I would see you first, and based on what I find, I'll recommend one of those things. Now, some someone might come in because they specifically hear about one of those uh, tests or treatments, and they'll want to do that particularly, which uh, the neurofeedback, the biofeedback, that's a standalone treatment. You could do that on its own. The uh, heart sound machine, that could be a standalone uh, test and treatment there. Um, so you could do those on their own, but generally, uh, if you're coming to see me, if there's a particular need, I'll uh, say, you know what, I think you should get one of these other uh, tests or protocols. Okay. And just so everyone's clear that's watching this, uh, yes, I still see Dr. Mike, even though he's in Chicago. I'm, I'm in Dallas now, but uh, it's worth it. Actually, my flight was only $45 Amazing. <laughs> to get there. So, uh, you know, it's worth it for me. And even though I haven't been sick in the last seven years, I think it's still very critical to to stay on top of your health because I think one of the things I, I learned is that you know we're um, we're a sponge and you know everyone's tolerance level is different. Clearly, mine was low at the time, but you know when a sponge fills up, it, it you know it doesn't hold any more water and it starts leaking out everywhere, right? And and normally that's why you know and the I haven't even had a cold or the flu in the last seven years. That's um, awesome. And, and I truly believe that's because of um, consistently detoxing and, you know, continuing to see uh, yourself and a couple of the other do doctors that I worked with just regularly. And really once a year usually is, is yeah. all I feel that, I mean, I don't even feel like I need to, but I've, it's just something I want to do because I would rather spend a little money to maintain and just check and make sure everything's clean 
uh, you know, it's, it's well worth it. So still it's worth the flight. It's worth the trip to go up there. And, uh, and, you know, so I just want everyone to know it's not because I'm sick, but yeah, I think there's a big importance of maintaining as well. So if you could give someone some tips as far as, uh, you know, I don't, just things that they can do to help them kind of keep their sponge not as full, what would you recommend? Sure. Yeah. So basically the, my technique, the technology I use in the office is based on stress and how your body can accommodate stress. And we're actually built to handle stress. But if you stress something too much, it, it's going to break. So everyone has a little different capacity. Everyone has a, a lot of different uh, inputs of stress. Their history from the time they were conceived to that present moment, they're going to have a lot of different things going on. And um, depending on how much room you have to handle stress, if you have this much room, then you, you got a little room to uh, play around with different stresses. If you have this much room, because you already have a lot of stresses or you've been compromised and your capacity is lower, you don't have much stress and you do a little bit of the wrong thing, you get big problems. When you have a, a lot of room, then uh, you can get away with some things as far as stress goes. So basically what I'm always looking at is what stresses are in your life and stress can be emotional, it can be from your environment and it can be from medications, it can be from injuries, it can be from food, etc. What are those things that are normal stresses that should be there and what are the things that shouldn't be there? So for instance, uh, a lot of the chemicals in the environment, those are stresses that were never meant to be in your body. We can handle them to a certain extent, but they don't need and shouldn't be there. So the more you get away from processed foods, fast foods, uh, oils that are rancid, so a lot of the vegetable oils, Diet wise, that's really big. The, getting to uh, cook at home and uh, eat food, fresh food at home. Uh, not everyone can afford organic things, but uh, the more you go in that direction, uh, looking at household items that uh, are chemicals, they all cause problems. The hair products, the skin products, they're all stresses on your body. So the more of those things you can eliminate and get more to a uh, biocompatible organic type of product, the less stress is going to be on the body and that more room you're going to have for other stresses in your life. Looking at things like a sleep, uh, I just had someone yesterday came in that told me uh, a month ago they started walking in the mornings. And so they were getting up at seven o'clock and when they started walking, they started getting up at uh, five o'clock, 545. And all of a sudden they just uh, fell apart. Uh, health wise and they thought well I'm doing this good thing I'm walking but really what was happening they're going from an average of seven hours of sleep to about five hours of sleep a night and their body couldn't handle that five hours of sleep and they fell apart so that's something that sleep's real important uh, scheduling during COVID right now a lot of people are off their schedules they're sleeping in they're staying up late they're eating at different times your body loves routine and schedule so being scheduled on t different things, um, wake up time consistent, bedtime consistent, meal times consistent. Mm -hmm.